it's an old Brandon Walsh, like there's another one. Well, there was that 902 one, never mind. Yeah, no, that's true, right? <laughs> it's true, you're right, you're right. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a chance to hang out with Josh for a little bit. We're going to do a little Q&A. I have a few questions here that I have ready, and we have a microphone right over here to my left, to your right. And if you want to get into a line, you'll have a chance and opportunity to talk. It's like uh, Comic-Con. Right. <laughs> Now, when was the weirdest the person come down first? Yeah, you have no idea where you're going to get. With the weirdest goony attire. <laughs> when was the last time you saw that movie on the big screen? I, th I can't remember. Wow. I was just talking to my son, who's 26. He saw it with his sister the last time, five years ago, Trev, right? Right? Five years ago. And then I think, I think it was 10 years ago. I think it's when we all got together and we did the commentary. So it wasn't really watching it. We were doing the commentary and we were commenting on each other and, you know, as you can tell in the movie, like, it's however many people are up there, never stop talking. Right. Right? So it was like that once we got back together 25 years or 20 years later. So I didn't get to watch the movie. So it's been a while. Now, for some who don't know, you do have a local connection. Are you not a Templeton Eagle, right? Yeah. <laughs> Very proudly. Like, there's a few people from like a Tascadero that are like, whatever, man. Yeah. <laughs> now, the movie was very popular even then in the 80s, but, you know, and if you look at lists that talk about the biggest movies of the 80s, virtually every list has this movie at the top of it. When did you know, where were you when this hit you like, wow, this is a cult classic, this is a, a timeless film? I don't know, it's one of those things, like, I remember... They, it was, they put a lot of money into it, and what we were—it was weird because they were doing, um, oh God, Pee Wee Herman's first movie next door, and and then my dad was doing Hotel Three Stages Over, so we were all just kind of in a really weird space, and like, and I remember Paul Rubens came over because he wanted my dad to play the older version of him, Pee Wee Herman in the first Pee Wee Herman film, so I was trying to finagle that deal while I was sliding down the slide and doing my deal. And you know, you have, you have no idea when you do a film, it's like no country, you're doing a film and you go, God, I hope three people see this. And you really don't have an idea. This was special just in the experience that it was when we were there, but it really wasn't until like five, seven, eight years later where you know, people started taking kids or younger kids or whatever, especially like 10 or 15 years later. Yeah. People were like, my, that's my kid's favorite movie. And then I realized how old I was at that point. And, <laughs> now keep in mind we're going to let you have a chance to ask some questions so if you want to line up right behind that microphone that I'm pointing at this would be the time to do that now Jeff um, Jeff Cohen, Cohen he I heard Chuck yeah I heard I read that he had chicken pox right before the movie but didn't want to not show up is that true or not did you have no to work idea. with a chicken pox chunk I, no 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 I don't remember that okay because I, I, I can't I, I can't imagine they bring him to the set he was so good in this movie I oh, forgot yeah. how good he was yeah. I mean, he was 10 years old. He's 10 years old, and he actually, he's 25. It's amazing. Now, recently you were on Fallon, and you had the bandana on, and everything was great, and he was joking with you about a Goonies 2. Has there ever really been talk about that? What Would you do it? And I mean, I know Hollywood's in the remake trend right now. Would you be down for a Goonies 2? Look, man, this is like, this is 30 freaking years later, you know what I mean? And like, this has been the one you, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> No, it's like, what would you, when you watch a movie like this, you kind of don't want to mess with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, kinda, you know, there's something so wonderful and so lame about this movie <laughs> <laughs> that you just, like, keep it wonderful and lame. You know, it's perfect. There's a couple things I want to I don't to mean that in. negatively at all. No, not way. at all. You know, We're going to get to you guys in just a second. There's, there's a couple things on the horizon for you. Two very exciting movies, Inherent Vice and, of course, Everest. Talk a little bit about just what's what we can, you know, expect. That's why next. it's fun, you know, to make the decision this year and to be on Fallon and to actually say to him, like, why don't we do the red bandana? I don't know what to talk about. I have nothing to talk about. Why don't we just do a Goonies thing? And, you know, it's fun this year because I've been doing so much heavy stuff and the heavy roles, and I'm like the gnarly guy, you know what I mean, from Paso, from Templeton. Like, he's a cowboy, you know. And it's so great to be able to go back and especially, you know, Wendy, who's so wonderful in dealing, you know, with this festival and everything, and she and I go back and forth, and we have a full-blown relationship now on the email. You know, well, I saw that hug when you first came here. It was no, very, no, no. You held her very tightly. She's like more of a sister than anything. No, no, no. No, don't say that. No, I didn't mean it in a bad way. I didn't mean it. It wasn't it's suggestive. Weird. Don't make it more weird. Okay. 
<laughs> but to, I, she said, well, come in the back and meet. I go, no, 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 it's San Luis Obispo, first of all. Second of all, I want to come and watch it. I want to have fun with everybody, because it is a fun thing. Right? <laughs> so it's, it's nice to be able to talk about something fun like this, you know, and communal. So. Cool. Well, why don't you introduce yourself to Josh and then ask your question. Go ahead. That's a pretty good shirt, dude. Good first start. <laughs> I actually made it myself. Oh, God, I, I, I know. They <laughs> 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 created. Well, I, I wanted to ask, uh, do you still keep in touch with the original cast of this movie? And also, do you ever look for young, handsome protégés or co-stars? Like yourself. <laughs> Myself included, yes. Do you realize how many people are thinking really weird thoughts right now? <laughs> in here just or in the around the world? No, just in here. <laughs> in this world that you just created. <laughs> um, uh, I'm, the, uh, the second part of the question, I don't know. Sure, man, you know. Um, and the first part of the question, I do keep in touch with them. You know, Chunk is a lawyer now. He's skinny, he's in very good shape, he's still short. Um, uh, you know, and everybody's doing their thing because it's been 30 years, you have a lot of ups and downs and you know, Sean Astin, his career like went skyrocketed with the, one of the movies with, with Vigo. What is that? All right, all right, sorry. I know, that's awful. I've been in a little bubble. Um, and, uh, you know, everybody, everybody's great. I think Kiwi Kwan does a lot of uh, stunt choreography now. And everybody's doing their own thing. But, you know, we get to look back on this as a really special time, for sure. Thanks for your question. You're very handsome. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Full Comic-Con moment. Right. <laughs> you asked for it. I know. No, no, no. I like him. I, you know. Uh, how's it going? My name is Anthony. Hey, man. Uh, congratulations on a great career. And um, I was just curious, what do you think about the success of the Guardians of the Galaxy? I know you're only in it for like three minutes, but uh, it was full-blown amazing. Well, I think it was because of me, first of all. Uh, no, no, no. I'm really happy about it. You know, I, I've been, and I don't say this pretentiously, but I've been offered a lot of bigger movies, and I, and, I, and I have kind of stayed away from them, not because they're big, but they don't necessarily resonate for me. And I try to stick with what I would like and what I think resonates. And, and I, knew a, I know a guy, and I knew him a long time ago when he was a first AD, who is now the co-president of, uh, of Marvel. And he's done very well for himself. And those guys are really, like, they're into story. And look at the actors that they're using. And they're kind of creating a different deal. And I really have a lot of respect for it. And plus, Thanos is such a great character. It's like, and and what, one last question. When should we expect him to start tearing the house down? The house down? Oh, what, that Thanos. one? Yeah. Oh, oh, no, not that one. We're talking about Thanos still? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. I can't answer that oh. question. I can't. I got no Thanos stuff. All right, cool. Thank you. It's like full secret. Thanks for your questions. Hey, Josh, my name's Joe. I uh, yeah. just wanted to know, um, during the scene when you guys come down the water slide and you see the pirate ship for the first time, yeah. uh, it seems like there's a real essence of surprise. I want to know if you had seen the ship prior to that. We had, they wouldn't they, let you, right? No, the what? They wouldn't let you see the ship? No, they true? wouldn't let us see the ship. No, and that, that's the biggest stage on Warner Brothers. And it's the same stage they used for Ghostbusters. Was it true that when they showed you the ship, some of the kids said, like, holy shit? No, and they, I they, did. Oh, I did. you said holy shit, and they had to re-shoot it. Uh, yeah. I don't even know if that's true. I think I made that up. But, <laughs> I don't know because it's been 30 years. So well, shit, um, was, shit was said plenty of times. But no, no, no. But we were black. I know in the movie. But but we were backed into the the stage. It was a ramp, and we were backed into the stage. And then they had like nine or eight cameras or something. Some underwater, some above. And I came. They wanted a, a real reaction. And I came up, and we turned around, and I went, "Fuck!" <laughs> um, and they were like, "What? No, man." <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, it's so cool. You know? It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, a lot of the CGI stuff, it didn't have, like when she's playing the bones or the, you know, and the floor falls through, that's like the beginning of CGI, you know, they didn't have a lot of CGI then. So everything was practical. When you walk into a stage, you see a 110 foot ship. That's an actual 110 foot ship. It was amazing. And then I noticed that uh, we did not get to see the octopus in this one. No, but isn't it in the, on, on the DVD? Yeah, I think? yeah, like a director's cut. Right? Yeah. One of those, it was like an Ed Wood moment where you're actually holding a rubber thing, but you're shaking it as yeah. if it's moving. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for your question. Hi, I'm Kate. 
Hi. Big fan. My heart's beating so fast. Um, I was going to ask about the octopus as well. So okay. that's the question. Sorry about him. Boy. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, guy. Um, do you have any favorite fishing spots around here when you come down? Fit my pond. Oh, on your property? Yeah, that's drying rapidly. But yes, nice. largemouth bass. My uh, other well, look question. Look at my hat. I mean, it's. I know, I saw that. Well, is that why? Do okay, sorry fishing. to make the connection. I'm a little slow. In, uh, <laughs> in your No Country film, was it really hard to play the scene where you're injured the entire time? I always think that would be like the most strenuous no. thing to do. No. Well, you mean my, when I get shot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I had. Unfortunately, I had gotten in a motorcycle wreck two weeks before I shot. Oh. I hit a car and I snapped my collarbone in half. So the only reason I was able to do that movie was you're because they, no, no, they, that, uh, the, the character gets shot in the right shoulder. Had it been the left shoulder, had it been my leg, it all would have been. Right. It's literally the only reason I was able to do the movie. Yeah. If you see, like, holding the gun in the beginning, I'm holding it like a sharpshooter right. because you're, I was supposed to hold it like that, but I couldn't bring this arm up. And then when I pick up the bullet, you'll see the elbow is against my, because I can't do that. Right. So I kind of put it in like I have, <laughs> yeah, it's like I have palsy or something. <laughs> Thank you. Um, nice question. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Would you mind helping that young lady? We'll move that microphone yeah, down yeah. for her a little Just bit. jump up each word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Go ahead, sweetie. What's her name? Hi, very nice to meet you. I'm Josh. Hi. Hi. Um, what, what was your favorite movie when you were making the when you were making the movie? That's an awesome question. That's an awesome question. God, what was my favorite movie? Did you ever see Gremlins? <laughs> I was. I don't know if it was my favorite, but I watched it a lot, and I didn't tell anybody because I thought it was too weird. <laughs> but I liked I liked Gremlins a lot. Um, what else was back then? Oh, E.T. I loved E.T. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I cried a Have lot. you seen E.T. Flannery? Yeah. yeah? Okay, cool. You and me, we're like the same. <laughs> Great question, Flannery. Thank you. Thank you, Flannery. Good, Good job. Let's give Flannery a hand. Yeah. Wonderful question. Good job, sweetie. She's like, I'm not leaving, dude. <laughs> Keep talking. Hi, my name's Jack. Uh, one of the questions I had was, uh, with your work with Goonies, um, what kind of advanced acting uh, tactics did you use to uh, be m more of a brother with Sean Anston? Well, I didn't have to use any, because he had, I mean, it was, it was really familial during that time. And we were on location. We went to Astoria, Oregon. We went to Bodega Bay. So, I mean, it was a really familial experience. And it took a long time to shoot. Yeah. I think we shot for six months, at least. And it was, what you see, by the way, is what it was. I mean, it was that all the time. And honestly, Spielberg did something I still can't believe today. Dick Donner was so tired of us, the director, by the time we finished, that he had a little house in Maui. So he took off to Maui, and Spielberg uh, put us all on a plane and had somebody go before, take Dick Donner to the store or something, get him out of his house. We went in his house, we threw our clothes everywhere, and then lounged, and then when Dick Donner came back home, all the Goonies were in his yard. And that, that was a, uh, it was a prank that Spielberg apparently thought was really funny, and so did we, but Dick did not find it. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, at the acting thing, you know, it was the beginning, man, and I was like, I can tell, you guys can't, I'd say to, even to talk about it is kind of uh, lame just because I was watching East of Eden, I was watching On the Waterfront, I was watching Brando, I was watching Montgomery Cliff. So I see me trying to do that. Nobody else knows, but I do. Yeah. You know, it was like, that was my, I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I had been on maybe 300 auditions before. I'd been told I should probably not choose this profession, you know, and all this stuff. And I just kept banging away and banging away. And this was like a complete coup. So I was learning. I was reading Stanislavski in my little tiny trailer and all that. Yeah. It wasn't until later that I was able to actually know or understand what I was doing. This was a, this was an accident. <laughs> well, a, good accident. a fun one. Yeah. A really fun <laughs> accident. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for your question. Hey, you got it, buddy. Look at you. All right. Big arms. Hi, my hey, name man. is Joy. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, nice to meet you. I'm also a dancer and an cool. actor, too. Right on. And nice. I have a question for you. Should I wait for adulthood to be an actor, or should I not wait? I think that you should find out when they're doing Goonies 2, and I think you should be the star. Yeah. <laughs> That's all he needed to hear. He is all the way down. He's like, don't cool. tell your mom I said that, please. <laughs> that was great. He was like, cool, I'm out of here. <laughs> that was cool. Hi. <laughs> Hi. What's Hi. Your name? Hi. My name is Sherry Ann, and um, my question is, I was wondering how you guys stayed warm in the movie. It's because you were wet most of the time. That's a really good question, <laughs> honestly. And I thought about that when we were just watching the movie. We were sick almost the whole time that we were in the water. Really? Yeah, yeah. The, the highest temperature was mine. It was 104. Um, yeah, it was because we were in the water 12 hours a day. And, and we get in and we get out. And it wasn't about really, because it was really hot in there. They had heaters and all that stuff. It wasn't cold. Man, when you're that hot, and you're, it was, so we, <laughs> um, yeah, we had fun, but it was, it was, it was a little too hot in there. I remember it being really hot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I know. Thank you for it's your question. It's a weird answer. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Take care. You go, you girl. Broke it. There you go. <laughs> Hi, my name's Lily, and I was wondering how did you guys make the training wheels fall off of the kid bike that you were riding? <laughs> they had a platform right next to the car that you couldn't see, that, so I would pedal this kind of pedaling contraption, and then they had a separate shot of just the back tire, and then they had a string on it, and they would pull off a, uh, the, the, we're all a bunch of little shots. But what's the better answer? Is I was really riding it, and we were going so fast <laughs> that, that they exploded off my bike. That makes sense, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Before I flew off the cliff <laughs> and got dirty and not hurt. <laughs> I, know. I love how the speedometer so, yeah. is like at 45, oh, I know, and your knees I know. are still going. I know, like, exactly. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks for your question. How fast are you going? 180. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't going to ask a question. I just came. You were helping the kids girls. out. I saw yeah, that. that's my girls. Yeah. I, hi, I'm Brad. Hey, man. Um, after shooting, you and Carrie Green. <laughs> yeah, we had three kids. No. No. Uh, no. She. She was such a nice girl. Did she? I think she had a boyfriend. Or um, it didn't. Not that that mattered. But. It, yeah. <laughs> Not that it didn't matter that she did not that it meant I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> pursuing it. No, you're you know going no you don't. Yeah, okay. I don't. No, you don't. No. She a wonderful, wonderful actress. Not that it mattered. Oh my god. <laughs> Just in the night there. Okay. Hi, my name's Ian. Um I actually have two Hi. questions. The first one, what was your favorite part of the movie? My favorite, that's a good question. The kids have the best questions. Um, my favorite part of the movie, doing it or watching it? Both. Okay, doing it, probably the slide. The slide was my favorite. Um, watching it, um, probably the scene in the attic in the beginning. We did that 128 times. Seriously? Yeah, we did it for a day and a half. And I just remember how crazy it was. And it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of improvising. They were making up a lot of stuff and his tongue coming through the, the I thought that was great. Well, um, my second question was supposed to be a backup question in case anybody asked my first one. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so but I was smart. curious, so. Um, if you could change the name of your character from Brandon, what would it be? Wow. <laughs> You're freaking me out. <laughs> um, well, you're the one who came up with the question, so did you come up with a name within no. your question? No? Nope. Oh, that's no help. 
Um, I don't know, because he's such a kind of a dumb jock. I mean, he's a very protective kid, but he's kind of like, you know, but Brutus is probably too much. <laughs> Todd. Yeah. That's a good one. Todd's an even dumber name. <laughs> no offense, but, but, you know, hey, I'm Todd. It's my brother. Todd's talk like that, I think. <laughs> At least in 84. That's like three Todd's that have to walk out for. I know, three people walk away. I hate that dude. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even like the movie. He made it personal. I don't know, but I'll think about that tonight when it's way too late to think about it. I'll still be thinking about it, so thanks. Thank you. All right, man. See ya. He was awesome. Hi. My name is Drew. I was wondering, did you learn anything working with Dick Donner that, that has served you the rest of your career? Because Dick Donner's a pretty good director. No, he is, and he did Superman, and he did all the Lethal Weapons yeah, and all Batman. that. It's not that I, I just knew that I was working with somebody. He had so much energy and he was so great at keeping this kind of family together. He had an incredible amount of energy. And, and I, 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 if I learned anything, it was, if I took anything away from it and if I look back at my career, I'm pretty good at keeping a set fairly positive. I don't get into just my own thing. I do sometimes, but, but I think I keep it pretty, pretty light especially with the stuff that I've been doing, which is fairly heavy. I think, uh, I, I, so probably that. All right, probably would you by that. chance remember the prop lady, Ann Reeves? Um, Tall, good looking girl? It's my mom, she was the is prop that, person. Oh, she yeah. was the prop person? Yeah, and I actually worked on it as part of the second unit. But no I way, yeah, no I way. It's funny, because I remember most, like most people, not, not even most people, but I remember more about that movie than I do about recent movies, you know what I mean? Because, yeah, she, she came home soaking wet every day. She had waiters. Yeah. I have a that. feeling if I saw her face, <laughs> I, would, I would remember. Oh, of course, she yeah. passed away last year. Oh, did she? Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear She would have loved to have seen you here. Yeah. Thanks for coming to the film well, festival. Great film festival. Well, you need to come back during the film festival. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I know. I've been gone. I've been working. Take a day off. I love it. <laughs> Suddenly there's cops at my door and an injunction. Hi, I'm Dan. Hey, man. Uh, I had a question about the, the No Country shoot. Did, mm. the, did the elusive Cormac McCarthy ever uh, appear on set? He did. What was he like? What was he like? Um, normal. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Didn't, yeah. Like pump him for a bunch of questions since he got out of. No, the no, no, no. That's like no. That's not really a. Pay. He brought his son first of all. He had been to one set before. I think all the pretty horses. Okay. And did and stayed away from sets. Not necessarily after that, but he just wasn't interested in that kind of thing. And you know, he's an amazing writer. I think he's one of the greatest American writers we've ever had. Sure. And. Uh, but yeah, I called him. I called him, and I, 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 bu I was the one. I was the one who called him and bugged him and left messages for him and all that. And then finally he came, and he was extremely pleasant. And we didn't make, you know, I mean, you have Cormac McCarthy, who's fairly quiet. You have Javier Bardem, Bardem who doesn't speak the greatest English. And then you have the Coens, who don't talk. <laughs> and then you have me, and then the kid. So me and the kid talked a lot. <laughs> and everybody else just kind of, was, you know, did their thing. Bunch of quiet geniuses, you know. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you, honestly. Hi, my name is Kira. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, I was just wondering, obviously the depth of this character that you played here must have lent to all of the other characters that you've played throughout your incredible why, career. Why are you being sarcastic? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just trying to make it. I don't know, it's all good. <laughs> Good. No. Um, what I actually really wanted to want, wanted to know was when you did this movie, mm -hmm. obviously were very young, and um, did you have any idea, or did, when you when you accepted this part, did you think of it as, oh my God, Spielberg, Jaws, no. right, you know that kind of no, no, ignorance? No, no. Did you have any idea that? I had it was no idea. Be? No, no. Ignorance is bliss. I had no idea. I ruined the first half day of shooting when we were doing the. Uh, in the beginning when I'm doing, the, I don't know, the bench press thing, um, because I was so nervous. I, I didn't go on the set a lot, because I was up here, I was in Templeton, my dad was in Los Angeles working. So I got really nervous, and how those nerves manifested as I started laughing, I got the giggles, and then I couldn't stop with the giggles. Um, so I ruined, I probably cost them $50,000 or something, $70,000. Um, but, uh, you know, I, no, no, to answer your question. I mean, it's one of those things that, you, you get into and you don't really have an idea. And like I said, I, I, 
I wasn't an actor at that point. You know, I look at some of these, and not to put myself down at all, but I look at some, you know, Martha Plimpton, she became a phenomenal actress. I look at uh, Jeff Cohen, and he was so precocious and good. I look at Sean Astin, and you know, he's that mod a couple of monologues and speeches that he had. They're totally compelling, you believe it. And even though they're a little exaggerated and they're a little over the top, they work perfectly with the tone of the film, you know. And then I'm back there like, I don't know what I was doing. Um, <laughs> but I was into it, and we were all really into it, you know. And, and it was later on that you start to, I, I went and I did a bunch of theater. And, and it was then that when you have 700 people or whatever in front of you, and you go, okay, I better get this. Right, and then you know you have little shifts in, in your career, and you feel like, yeah, I don't feel like I ever know anything. I always feel like I'm learning. I know that sounds pretentious, but it's true. You know, that was the beginning. That was such a great experience. That I thought every movie was like that, and I was really wrong. <laughs> and uh, and then I got to kind of learn after that. But that as a first experience it just doesn't happen. Yeah. It doesn't happen. Uh, incredible. Yeah. Great question. Well, thanks. Mm -hmm. I have to say also that. This movie was my first date movie. Oh, really? Ever. And all I could do was sit here and look at the guy next to me and go, oh, oh, right, oh, right. oh. But, no. Yeah, were you feeling a little randy during the movie? Well, you know, I have to say, I don't remember his name. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. But here you are. Oh, whoa. <laughs> I told you, I'm a little slow, man. I'm just. Oh, man. <laughs> Funny. Hi. Everybody wave to my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if you have a good comeback for students of drama from small towns like Templeton. Mm. Um, when people tell them, no, don't, don't pursue that. Don't pursue acting or performing as a, um, you know, as a career. Yeah, laugh. Learn to laugh at them. Not with them, at them. Just at them. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I heard that many, many times. I'm too green, I'm not good enough. I heard later on, somebody at Miramax, Merrill Poster said that me and Benicio Del Toro, who I just finished working with for the fourth time, said that we were the worst auditioners in the history of their studio. <laughs> and that's all good, that's all good to me. I mean, you can, failure to me is an absolute, and it's something to embrace. It's the only time that you, re it's not the only time, but it's a time that you learn. And it can, you can befriend it in such a great way. It can be such a great motivator. My dad said a great thing to me that kids, young kids won't understand. But he says, I remember one year I looked at you and you had gone to war. Like, you re like I'm not going to not do this. I'm not going to listen to everybody else. And I'm going to work as hard as I can. And I, I always know my stuff. I'm very professional. And, and, it, and it also gives me the leverage to mess around a lot, which I do. Um, I, I make it fun, and I make it funny. And, but the thing is, is, young kids are so vulnerable to somebody saying, you know, that was nice, but it's not real, or something like that. You know, it doesn't matter. With acting, everything goes. It's a profession of humiliation. So you get to do everything, and everything works. There's no right, ever. Thank you very much. Yeah, great question. Hi, my name is Mars. I would like to know what's your favorite cartoon? Cartoon? Jack Skellington is who you have on your shirt, right? Yep. That's one of my all-time favorite movies. That's my second favorite movie of all time. What's your first? Godzilla. What about the Goonies? Where'd it go? <laughs> Godzilla's really your favorite movie? Well, First one. Oh yeah, the first. I was gonna ask you that, and I thought it was an insult. No, that's really cool. The first one. Jack Skellington is probably my favorite cartoon character of all time. Cool. 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 You're cool. <laughs> we can just. Um, they talked about an octopus. Is there a deleted scene with an octopus? There is. That's what I, I yeah, we did, did scenes with octopuses. And the, yeah. I, think, I think it's in the deleted, like the deleted scenes of the DVD. I had the 25th anniversary DVD or the 20th anniversary. Or 
25th? The Blu-ray. <laughs> yes. And the 60th anniversary, we'll have more to leave. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice to meet you. Hi, my name is Diego, and um, I just wanted to ask, um, how old were you when you um, did the movie? I was 16. I was 16, and I turned 17, I believe, during the movie. I was 16. How old are you? Eight. Eight? All right. W. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm not much taller, but... Hi, my name is Nicolette. This is Hannibal. Hi, Hannibal. Um, That's actually... pretty hilarious. <laughs> Penelope. Any, 
any question you want. Do you want to know if you're still Oh, always. Always. <laughs> For better or worse, I'll always be the oldest Goody. <laughs> the answer to that question, if that was your question, is yes. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank like you. Your shirt, too. Hello, my name is Mia. Um, did you really kiss the girl in the movie? <laughs> Um, yeah, but it, it was it was really it's it's weird because when the camera's on you and a bunch of people are watching you and like somebody's yawning and looking at your clock and they want to go home and watch, it's a really weird thing. But it was it was she was really really sweet. We were we were very professional. It was a little uncomfortable. You know, you have to do things for work. <laughs>
you know, I, I, I pretty much just like threw the towel in and figured it was going to be a failure. So then that gave me confidence to be able to say, I might as well just go for it. Just like getting up and doing stand up. And if the jokes don't work, then, you know, there's always tomorrow. Um, and, uh, and Men in Black was kind of the same way. It was like nobody could figure out the cadence of Tommy. Nobody ever does in any comedy routine. Nobody ever does Tommy in the jump. And yet he's a guy that you would think everybody would do because he's such a personality. But there's no way to follow his cadence. It's almost impossible. So I was like holed up in Mexico with my buddy Bardo and his family and, um, and going crazy. And then once in a while you get like a syllable or a sentence. And you, you, you know, you take one to the garage man, you have to yourself basically do it again and not being able to do it the next day. You know, it's, a, it's crazy figuring it out, but then once you figure it out, remember Barry Sonnenfeld, the first scene that we did on Men in Black, came back around with the camera and he was crying. He was so happy that he had made the right decision. And then the whole movie wasn't going to go to the SHIT. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you're remarkable. Thank you very much for yeah. saying that. I'm a big fan of you. Thank you. Thank you. Best of you. All right, there's a couple of questions here. can't do it. She locked down. That's all right. She wanted to know if you'd sign her poster. Um, oh, yes. I don't mean to be that kind of a guy. So That's all right. I'm here and ask for a signature. Um, huge fan, obviously. Um, I watched the movie about a thousand times when I was a kid. She asked me, obviously, when she was old enough to speak, what my favorite movie was, and I showed it and ended up watching it a thousand more times. How great. Um, the poster we have, is, at least what I'm being told, is I got from a friend of mine that did graphic design on the movie, and it was uh, hanging in the Chinese theater. Uh, at the premiere, uh, wow. back when it uh, first shows. Right. Hangs out. Hey. It's our masterpiece in our living room. Very good. Uh, we took it down and uh, we given it to her. So. I would love to sign it. Yeah, yeah, she would love to sign it. She wanted to come up here. She wanted yeah. to come up here. Here, you know what? I can just get on my knees. She's like, I don't want it. You wanted it, Dad. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> 